Hello YouTube, Validation Boy here. I've noticed a lot of people in the Flat Earth Internet community expressing some interest in the validity of Einstein's special theory of relativity. This reminded me of an article I posted on a popular internet forum back on January 5th, 2014, titled The Relativity Deception. It reads as follows. Have we been duped by Einstein's special theory of relativity? I would argue that his baseless postulation concerning the motion of celestial bodies was nothing more than a failed attempt to replace the long-substantiated geocentric model of the universe. His famous SR hypothesis was specifically developed to explain away the results of multiple experiments that would have brought the momentum behind big science's then latest fad to an abrupt halt. These inconveniently damning experiments conclusively demonstrated that all CBR, cosmic background radiation, emulates directly outward from the Earth, rather than originating from some distant universal Big Bang. Earlier, Hubble had been greatly troubled upon discovering that no matter which direction he peered into the night sky, all detectable light in outer space seemed to be moving uniformly away from the Earth. Einstein, among many others, was tormented by the notion that the Earth was just as special and just as central as creationists had claimed it was for thousands of years. Comically, special relativity fantasizes exclusively in unrealistic and unprovable scenarios, yet is commonly accepted as real science. Furthermore, the madness of this temporal delusion continues to provide a shaky foundation for copious amounts of unprovable hypotheses to this day. One of his more ridiculous relativity scenarios goes as such. Two twins are separated at birth. Twin A remains on Earth while Twin B is shot deep into the cosmos at a very high speed. Upon Twin B's return home, observers find he has aged significantly less than Twin A during his time away. This supposedly happened because the time that Twin B experienced progressed at a different rate than the time that Twin A experienced. This difference in rate of time passage has yet to be fully explained any further beyond this without the involvement of yet more contradictory imaginings and paradoxes. Regardless, the theory remains the most widely embraced, yet most unfounded presumption concerning the motion of celestial bodies mankind has ever dreamt up. It's been said that after his first presentation of SR, more than half of the scholars and physicists in attendance walked out of the room laughing, disgusted with the ignorant arrogance of his unprovable conjecture. Upon simple examination of SR, two conundrums arise which immediately nullify its validity. Number one. Since the Earth cannot logically be stationary in any relative model, who can empirically claim that Twin A was not in motion while B was darting away? Perhaps Twin A was the one racing away from Twin B. Perspective is always relative. Number two, since nothing supposedly travels faster than light, how could objects traveling at a lesser speed ever experience time dilation at all? Neither human bodies nor man-made camera technology can endure travel at that speed, much less properly interpret any data we'd collect from hypothetically traveling at such a speed. Why is it that Einstein's nonsense is so widely accepted as absolute truth? I'll tell you exactly why. The imperialists who funded this quack wanted you believing that you are nothing more than a purposeless ant, pissing about on some insignificant ball of dirt amidst an infinite sea of deadly, uninhabitable blackness. No wonder you had that gut feeling your teacher was full of crap when they told you the Earth hurtles through space at 67,000 miles per hour while rotating at 1,000 miles per hour. And that you can't feel this because of another unexplained force some fictitious ancient scientist labeled gravity. In actuality, it's much more likely that the Earth simply isn't moving at all. They even go so far as to claim our atmosphere remains miraculously attached to the planet throughout all this, despite these outrageous speeds absolutely laughable. There's a reason why the mythical caricature of Einstein persists to this day. His star has posthumously risen to astronomical heights via an endless campaign of iconic photographs depicting a goofy, wild-haired, tongue-biting genius, which were in no way authentic representations of Albert himself. The lovable muse in those photos was merely the prototypical manufactured image of American celebrity. He was nothing more than a paid stooge for powerful factions that hovered ominously behind the geopolitical scene of the early 1900s. When discussing Einstein, only one thing is certain. He was no hero. The mental gymnastics he performed mean nothing in the grand scheme of things, and remain unvalidated to this day. This man's legacy is a true reflection of the powerful influence manufactured celebrity has on human belief.